few years ago, well, more than a few years ago, 30 years ago at least, Rob and Miles were working in the arena. And it's funny because I asked Miles this evening, I said, you remember when uh, you and Rob, there was a guy hung up on the wall and you guys got tossed in the air? He says, yeah, it was Harold Tappenstall. And it's funny how these guys remember um, the bowls, they remember the rides, they can recall them like this. And Miles fought bowls for almost 40 years, which is amazing in and of itself. But anyway, Harold got thrown over his hand, and as Miles said, he had a sticky rope anyway, and usually got hung up. And so Robin Miles jumped in the middle of this ball trying to free his hand. And they, what they try to do is they try to, to unwrap the wrap that's holding the hand because he's fallen over his hand. And the bull, of course, is just doing everything he can to get rid of everybody. And the bull, there's all of a sudden this big commotion, and up in the air go all three of these guys, go Harold, and Rob and Miles, and they all landed in a big pile in the middle of the arena. And they were all pretty much dazed. I mean, there wasn't any movement for a few minutes, and Bull just stood there like he didn't know what was going on. He got rid of everybody. And they popped back up, and they went on and finished the rodeo. And I'll never forget that. Miles was a uh, Gordon, Nebraska boy. Started fighting bulls when he was about 13, and he fought bulls in the Houston Rodeo for 30 years. And retired in 2008. And how you can do this for that long and put himself in the positions that he was in is absolutely amazing. Miles knew the bulls. He knew how to knew what they were going to do, pretty much. I talked to a few people that knew Miles back in those days, and I gave Donnie Gay a call. Donnie's known Miles, and Miles worked the arena a lot when we had the Donnie Gays and the Tough Edmonds and the Lane Frosts and the Jim Sharps and the Wasey Cathys and all of these fabulous bull riders that didn't wear protection, that wore their cowboy hats and got on those bulls. And there was a, a it was quite a group back in those days. Donnie Gay said of Miles here, said Miles was mentally tough. He had an extreme athletic ability. He was probably the most athletic bullfighter of his day. He took bullfighting to a new level, is what Don Gay said of Miles here. And then Don said, if I was getting hooked, so was he. That is one of the greatest ever. I talked to a man who probably considers himself Miles' brother, Robin Smets, world champion in his own right. He said Miles here has forgotten more about bullfighting than anyone will ever know. Miles was the first world champion, and then repeated again in 1988, but he shared that title with Rob Smith's outfit. <laughs> Rob told me a story in 1983, they were fighting bulls, and Rob wasn't doing too well. A lot, not, not scoring well, and he was thinking maybe he ought to just maybe pack it up and head it in. And he said, I came, he said, after the rodeo, I was telling Miles I was pretty discouraged, and Miles gave him some advice that made a big difference in Rob's life. Miles said, Quit all the fancy stuff and get back to the basics. And Rob went on to win the world that year. The other thing that I admire more than anything about the rodeo way of life, because every single contestant out there, I don't care whether you're a team roper, 
a steer wrestler, a bull rider, whatever you're doing, all of these guys help the next guy get a better score. They loan them their horse. If they can't get to a rodeo, if they break down, they give them their horse. They do whatever they have to do for these people to compete. Now, I dare you to find any other sport in our country that does that. And I, I admire all of you. It's an us, it, it's an all, it's a we're all together kind of a deal. And I think that's what I enjoy most about it. So, in closing, before I get Miles up here, and of course, as you know, bullfighters are pretty short on what they say, but they don't usually have to say much. But I want to, I want to bring up this man who is a six-time NFR bullfighter. Started fighting bulls in 1977, retired in 2008. He fought bulls at Romeo and Houston for 30 years. I think you've seen the picture of him with the saddle and the daily record. He's a world champion twice. He's in the PRCA Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. And now he's in the Ellisburg Rodeo Hall of Fame. It's my pleasure to introduce world champion Miles Hill. Young man, where's he at? He's in Ellensburg, Washington. 
is where it belongs. This rodeo is for the prestigious group. This really defines who, who I am. I came in here, I worked this road the first time I ever came here with Rick Pat. He was one of my heroes, one of my mentors. When I finished working this rodeo, I was working with Rob Smith, another one of the best in the world. And that really is what Ellensburg is all about. It's all, all about the best. And, and uh, like I said, it was a challenge every year. We come here, we swept for four days, and uh, we packed our stuff up. We used a lot of ice bags while we were here. And when we got out of here, we couldn't wait to get back in here the next year. And the first thing you wanted to do was get this contract back in your book. And uh, uh, that's what rodeo is all about. And I mean, there's nothing more important than the next bull they buck. And you buck the best ones here. And Miles Harris, one guy that's proud to be up here tonight. Rodeo Grammys 
always hung their hats and hearts near the land. From gathering cattle to appearing on major television shows, the rodeo grandmas rode plenty of miles, spreading their genuine Western hospitality and cowgirl spirit. Tonight, we are here to honor those five true Western hearts. Judy Galladay, Janice Capazzoli anderson Peggy Minor hunt Lorraine Plass, and Chloe Weidenbaugh. who are ambassadors for women, active senior citizens, the Western way of life, the Kittitas Valley, Washington State, and the Ellensburg Rodeo. There are so many ways to honor the rodeo grandmas, but Grandma Lorraine Plass said it best, quote, we're a good bunch together. And she was right all the time, I guarantee it. She did a lot of quotes, let me tell you. In December 1993, the Seattle advertising agency McCann Erickson came to Ellensburg looking for veteran ranch women to cast in Washington Mutual Bank's Washington Mutual's Bank's That's Different ad campaign. When the ad agency put Judy, who was 52 years old at the time, Janice, who was 57, Peggy, who was 66, and Lorraine, 82, together, no one could imagine that it would catapult them into such a fantastic journey, lasting 10 years. Lorraine's daughter, Chloe, was an essential member of the traveling party, and I was fortunate enough to be included as the photographer, manager, and yes, bus driver. And th thank you, University Auto, because we had the best Royal Grandma van in the world. Let me tell you that. commercials for the bank and were featured on billboards, buses, and countless, countless personal appearances, which led to regional, national, and international media coverage. Here at home, they were even on the telephone book cover. <laughs> they became a phenomenon. They were magnets for people young and old. Everyone has a grandma, but these grandmas knew how to ride and roll. Folks gravitated to their strength, their beauty, and their spark. Wrinkles didn't matter, and they even had to grade Peggy's hair for the rodeo for the first rodeo grandma commercial, which she did not want them to do, but they had to put gray in her hair. <laughs> but most importantly, they were true to themselves, and that was irresistible. The grandma's first television commercial aired in 1994. It was so successful that Washington Mutual, ba Washington Mutual Bank asked them to be back for two more. The first commercial was filmed between Woodenville and Redmond, Washington. The second commercial was filmed in the Caribou Canyon, right here in Kittitas County. And the third was filmed in Los Angeles, California. Let's take a look at those starring roles now. Here's the three commercials. Grandmas of Ellensburg, Washington. If you think this is out of the ordinary, what have we told you about a local bank that's been helping Northwest people save and invest since 1889? That's different. That's Washington Mutual. And it's something you just don't see every day. from Washington Mutual. Where are you fellas headed? Headed up north to open up some banks. Hey, this stage is empty. Exactly. See, we drive it up here empty and then take it back down south full. You all bandits then? No, ma'am. We're Californians. Washington Mutual, keeping the Northwest safe for truth, justice, and free checking. Is this checking plan really free? Absolutely. Not so fast. Grandma's. From Washington Mutual. Get them! Ah! Nice tight. Wait a second. Maybe I was wrong. 
Maybe like Washington Mutual, we too should offer free checking. It's actually free, without hidden charges. What am I saying? I just bought a boat. Get them. Truth, justice, and free checking. Say you're sorry. Ow. Grandma, that's my ear. Uh, by the way, that photo was taken during the second commercial out at Riding the Caribou and uh, not very far from the Clockham. So we um, did some um, uh, commercial work right here at home. After the first, first commercial aired, Avika L. Brandt, a reporter from the Yakima Bureau of the Associated Press, wrote a story on the grounds. The article and the picture that we took in the Ellensburg Rodeo Arena went far beyond central Washington running in papers across the country and around the world. The phone started ringing with interview requests, including from Tracy Vetter at Prem 2 News in Spokane. She met us at Chloe Weidenbaugh's Standing W Ranch. And at who else could tell their story as well as the ladies themselves? Let's play it and hear the voices and watch them ride again. agency went searching for four grandmothers who could ride and rope, they went to the heart of Washington cow country, Ellensburg, and they found four true western hearts. Lorraine Plass, range rider. Of course, I'm the oldest, I crack the whip. Yeah. <laughs> Peggy Minor Hunt, trick roper. Janice Anderson, team roper. I work daily roping my dummy steer, trying to get better and better. And Judy Galladay, all-around cowhand. I ride uh, about six to seven, between six and seven months out of the year for the Bar Balloon Ranch. <laughs> These women are naturals for a commercial because their skills are real. Born of necessity, circumstance, and an innate knack for handling a hard life with grace and humor and it's just our nature, we're just not ones to set. Peggy has trick roped and rode most of her life. Janice still helps her daughter and son-in-law on their ranch. We started out as kids in the branding crowd helping our mom and dad. Shoulder's not working too well today. I, I thought too, Janice should mention her grandsons, that she ropes with them. How old are they? Like One is six and one is nine. They rope their little ropers, I'll tell you. Judy rides range alone for months of the year. Come here, Tar. Her dogs and her horse, Shalar, are her main companions during the long hours. It's either in here or it's not. But it's Mother Nature and the animals and, and uh, God's country. It's just, uh, you just, once you're out there, you just don't, or I just don't want to let go of it. <laughs> Today, the women are rounding up cutting cows for Lorraine's daughter and son-in-law. At 83, Lorraine doesn't always ride the roughest terrain, but she still helps. Get out here, and oh boy, it feels so good, you know, uh, to be out here and see all the country and, and the, the fresh air, and you like to push cattle here and push them there and show them who's boss. <laughs> Auditioning for a TV commercial was a bit of a lark for them. I just went down because the daughter was going down, and I thought, well, I'll go down to uh, case the joint, you know, see what's going to happen. <laughs> But it also brought the four of them together with laughter and a friendship that's cherished. Wonderful ladies. Wonderful ladies. Yeah. We're a good bunch together. Yeah. Wherever their new TV popularity takes them, the rodeo grandmas will ride it magnificently. In Ellensburg, I'm Tracy Vetter, Kremtune News. Here's the second piece in that series. Again, the segments were filmed at Janice and Chloe's ranch 
allowing us to use the beautiful Kittitas Valley and the Allensburg Rodeo as our backdrop. Be sure to watch for a few familiar faces and voices here too. Jane, my gift to you. Try it on. Let's see it. Now I'm a rodeo grandma? No, you're just a rodeo gal. Uh, uh, a little hard to see, but I'll tell you, good. you're still young, but in their later years, they have become stars. They're not only a shining example for seniors, they're keeping alive a part of our national heritage. In fact, their exploits and adventures put us all to shame. So come along and just try to keep up with the rodeo grandmas of Ellensburg, Washington. They're the real thing. Western cowgirls who are at home on the range. Between them, they have almost 300 years of riding, roping, and wrangling experience. The youngin' of the group is 56-year-old Judy Galladay. She's a range rider, herding cattle for ranchers in the area, always with the help of her trusty cow dog. Janice Anderson is 61. There's generations of ranching experience in her blood, and she's still got the touch when it comes to calf roping. 70-year-old trick roper Peggy Hunt began performing in rodeos way back in high school. Four children and eight grandchildren later, she's still going strong. And last, but certainly not least, there's the spitfire of the group, 85-year-old Lorraine Platt. She cracks her whip not only to entertain audiences, but also to keep the other grandmas in line. They came together by chance answering a call for real Western women to audition for a Washington Bank TV commercial. The rest is Rodeo Grandma history. Since this first commercial three years ago, they've made rodeo, radio, and TV appearances all over the country. Out West, they're just about legendary, as you can see from their latest commercial. Is this checking plan really free? Absolutely. It's not so fast. Washington Mutual. Get them. Nice tight. So you can imagine my excitement and slight apprehension when I got the chance not only to meet the grandma, but perform with them in the world famous Ellensburg Rodeo. I may have shown up looking the part, but the grandmas wanted to make sure I could ride. You know, it's a rich tradition of Hispanic cowboys. Too bad it has absolutely nothing to do with me. Anyway, my riding passed the test. Lorraine, how am I doing so far? You're doing pretty good. Yeah? I'll give you a okay. All right, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Time to rehearse our act. We practice the grand entrance, our waving technique. And before I know it, Peggy's got me twirling a lasso like an old cow hand. Or at least it looks that way, thanks to the magic of television. After a little refreshment, and wouldn't you know, Lorraine's the first to crack into the beer. I finally get these dynamos to sit a spell and chat. You all have become role models for, yeah. for I mean, young and old, but especially the, the older folks. And for role models, how do you feel about that? We're not just sitting back in the rocking chair like some, you know, and, you know we're, we're keeping busy, keeping active. And like they say, you have to have a reason to get up in the morning. And I think we do. Wow. It's so nice to sleep in the morning again. <laughs> <laughs> you gals ever see the day you won't be riding? Retiring? Well, yeah. it'll be some. Well, they'll have to uh, take, take and have a heck of a time to keep up with me. Well, that's yeah. true. Yeah. I had a heck of a time trying to keep up with you today. <laughs> Keeping us all going, boy. But there's no, there's no retirement in store for you, gal. No, no, no. No, 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 no I said I'd ride as long as I could. Yeah. I, I, I'm afraid now my whole life before I do. Good <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Ellensburg Rodeo. It's showtime, and you can't start a rodeo without a big parade. Along the route, it quickly becomes apparent that overnight, word had spread around town about my biggest cowboy weakness. Jose, the proper way to say it is... Yee-haw! Jose, yee-haw! 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 Yee all right, so these guys, you always see at a rodeo, but how about this? Four grandmas and a greenhorn. After our entrance, Peggy takes center stage. Look at that. Then it's my turn. You have a rope. Boy, a New York cowboy with a pink rope. I like that. Well, I may not win any roping prizes, but I might just have one over Lorraine. What do you all think? You think we make a good pair? I think so. I think so. Especially if she gets the lady and lady. 
<laughs> oh, the lady. Continuing series Forever Young, a guide to life after 50 seniors take to the saddle. Today, contributor Florence Henderson is here with a story of four tireless seniors, a group of friends with so much energy, they actually make Florence look downright lazy. <laughs> and that's hard to do. Hi, Florence. Hi, Katie. Great How to are see you? you. Good. Me too. You look fabulous. Thank you, Dolly. Well, let's just say that this assignment brought me to the northwest town of Ellensburg, Washington, where I was hot on the trail and a little saddle sore, too. Throughout this valley and across the western plain, folks here whisper the tale. Deep in these parts rides a band of cowboys, four buckaroos, whip with a rope, and cattle prod, too. They're feared by man and beast alike. And if you stumble across their posse, don't call them sir. For these are the Rodeo Grandma. Nice thing to buckaroo, isn't it? People say, well, I've reached 65. I can take it easy, though. Who in the heck wants to take it easy? The eldest, 88-year-old Lorraine Platt, had to saddle up for school each day. Really? I rode a donkey. Oh. I had a little donkey I rode to school, five miles to school. Oh, he's a lady, a Today, lady, she's lady. master of the yodel. Oh, lady. You got to wheel on your tongue. Lady, and the only way you can do it is just oh, drive down lady. behind a bunch of cows. And they won't holler at you if you'll make a mistake or anything. In 1947, Peggy Hunt wore the Ellensburg Rodeo Princess crown. Changing hands in a loop. Now, at 73, she's still trick roping. <laughs> Janice Anderson is 64. Here, she lashes the steer in eight seconds flat. I just think it's good, healthy fun. And with 65 years of experience, Chloe Weidenbach, Lorraine's daughter, can read the heavens. See where the light from the sun makes a little, like a, a rainbow? That's called a sun dog. 
and when those are in the sky, there's a storm coming. The rodeo grandmas. The cowgirls first banded together in 1993 to answer a cattle call, I mean casting call. A local bank picked them to front their Wild West ad campaign. And they wanted a, a grandmother that chewed snooze <laughs> and rode bucket horses or bulls is what they asked for. Well, none of us did those things anymore. I mean, we were grandmas. Instead, the commercials feature the grandmas doing what they've been doing naturally for the last six decades as professional ranchers and rodeo performers. <laughs> they rope steer, barrel race, and just look pretty. The important thing, I feel, is even though you're out there working in all weather elements and under many different circumstances on the ranch, you can still be a lady. Two, three, four. During my own journey out west, I had no choice but to join the gang. At 88, you can still get on a horse. You just sit up there and let the horse do all the work. <laughs> How many grandchildren do you have, Lorraine? I have 18 great-grandkids. That's about all I have. <laughs> wow. That, that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Tell me, what qualifies one to be a rodeo grandma? We had to be able to ride, mm -hmm. and we had to be a grandma. Okay, so I had the grandma requirement covered. Murdoch, sit. <laughs> I just didn't tell the gals I hadn't saddled up since the Brady Bunch Grand Canyon episode. You gals think I'm going to qualify here as a rodeo grandma? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> as a rodeo grandma, I tamed that wild country, roamed the range, and braved the mighty rapids. Come on, Murdoch. <laughs> There's a third of a cup of molasses, dry mustard, <laughs> even baked beans. <laughs> when we eat it, you add vinegar to take care of the poppers. This is valuable information. <laughs> you can find this recipe in their new cookbook, Good Lookin' Cookin' with the Rodeo Grandmas and Friends. Scoot yeah. over. Oh, no, me some bossy. Yeah. <laughs> Lorraine also taught me how to yodel. <laughs> well, I, I holler that when the cows are all scattered. <laughs> Come up with your rope. And my friend Janice gave me steer roping lessons. Look at the horns. <laughs> home, home on the rain. All this before lunch is typical for the grandmas who are as busy as ever. Now they're working on a new children's book. The sun rose bright and pink that day and warmed the western hills. They dedicated the story to Judy Galloway, a rodeo grandma they lost to breast cancer two years ago. She's always with us when we go places. For the rodeo grandmas, the best place to be is on the back of a horse where they can see life a little more clearly. It's just a wonderful life. It's in your blood. It's what we live and breathe. And after you get a certain age, you don't dare you.
dogs and they'd have the ropes. And, um, and after we would play a little sequence like this, I would say, and now it's time to present the Romeo Grandmas. And so to present the honors to them, I would also like to say, would you like to meet the Romeo Grandmas in person? And would you like to meet the Romeo Grandmas in person? Trick riding. 
rope, I should say, pardon me. She did some trick riding, though, in younger years. Chloe was always jolly and helpful to all. Judy, being a range rider, called the ground her carpet and the sky her ceiling. For me, I love sharing my Western heritage. My ranching roots run deep. The grandmas all loved rodeo. We couldn't wait for the Ellensburg rodeo to come every year. The grandmas enjoyed riding their horses in the parade and grand entry. We all rode with great pride. I hope to see you at the parade and rodeo this year. Both will be special and you do not want to miss any of this action. In closing, sorry, I'm stage fright. <laughs> In closing, I have a special little surprise for you. His name is Maverick John, my dad's name, Minor. He is fifth generation, future Ellensburg Rodeo.